Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. Subscribe to this channel to explore the enigmas of our distant ancestors and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. The shafts within the king's and queen's chamber of the Great Pyramid have baffled antiquarians since the earliest recordings, since no other pyramids have them. There have been many interpretations of them, so let's take a quick look at some of the most common theories, as well as evidence for or against them, before getting to the main mystery of this video. One of the earliest interpretations that I've read is that they were for light, or at very least that light could be seen through them. A very small amount of light can indeed come in the shafts, and it would likely be bright enough to see. The human eye takes surprisingly little light for vision. However, once we got a good look inside, we saw low-quality stones that's roughly cut. Surely the Egyptians understood that to bounce light inside, they should use highly polished white limestone, like on the right, or even alabaster like the vase on the left. The Egyptians were skilled enough to polish stone to this level, but that was not done here, so light can be rejected outright. Dan from De Dunking has brought up that the Milky Way and astral rivers within the Egyptian religion, and the seeming importance of being bathed within these metaphorical rivers as part of the resurrection process. I believe he was spitballing here and providing possibilities as opposed to giving his opinion, but let's take a look at that possibility anyway. What's most interesting to me about this idea is that it kind of works with the architecture. If the Milky Way was the spiritual river in the resurrection mythos, perhaps the Egyptians viewed it as sort of an upside-down river, which fits with what we see in the stone. The shafts are made in a strange way. The most obvious way to make a shaft is just to line up some stones with a gap between them, but that's not what was done here. Another way to make a shaft is to carve a channel into one stone, then lay a stone over it as a ceiling. This ensures that the channel is watertight on the bottom, where stacked stones would not be. This stone on the left is carved that way, and there is no question that it is a drainage stone to get water out of Khafre's temple. But the shafts aren't made this way either. Well, they are, but then they're turned upside down. Why? Should we maybe be looking at this feature upside down, like astral rivers meant to flow up? Being upside down had a religious significance to the Egyptians, but it hardly seems relevant to a pharaoh, as it was sort of like their version of hell. The idea being that your digestive tract would run backwards, and the ends you eat and excrement from would be reversed. So while it does almost seem like an upside down drainage pipe, the association of upside down with punishment doesn't seem appropriate. However, most of the information about Upside Down in the religion comes from much later. Perhaps the Old Kingdom had different ideas about it, so we will have to come back to it. The star alignment theory became popular in the later part of the 1900s, but has lately fallen out of favor for a number of reasons. The primary reason being that the shafts aren't even remotely straight, and stars aren't fixed in the sky, they rotate around the poles. They're also in different positions at different times of the year, and the Egyptians were aware of this. It's how they knew how to plant crops. In order for the shafts to point to a specific star, they'd have to just hope that the pharaoh died at a specific time of year, so I entirely reject this theory. Similar to the previous two theories, these shafts have been suggested to be an escape route for the soul of Khufu. Yet, this makes little sense to those who have looked closely at Egyptian tombs. Souls walked through false doors, and they were full size, whereas the shafts are just five inches. Most mastabas have them, and there appears to be something analogous to one in the queen's chamber, though that's very speculative. They were also highly polished, not a rough chiseled hole that he'd have to squeeze through. Here is actual footage of what Egyptologists proposed to be Khufu's final journey to godhood in this theory. Another theory that I've heard from YouTuber Night Scarab was that they were used for rolling balls or pulling ropes that signaled different things between inside and outside workers, as they are more or less hand height. These items were found in the closed queen's shaft. The ball is almost certainly a hammer, but it's possible the copper device was used to manipulate ropes. However, this would require that the shafts were open during construction. The Queen's Chamber shafts were not opened until the 1800s, 
And history for granite has shown very clear evidence that the king's chambered shaft, at least the north one, remained closed during construction, and the ends were blocked by a few inches of stone that had to be drilled and cut later. Based on his observations and the unused queen's shaft, I think we can safely say these shafts did not have any use during construction. Ancient Architects had a video where he talked about Jean-Pierre Houdin's idea for them being audio channels for the communication between teams inside and outside the pyramid, because of the phenomenal acoustic properties of the pyramid. But I believe this is an unintentional side effect. Of course the King's Chamber will have amazing acoustics. It has flat walls and is made of granite. It will reverberate and amplify. I'd love to play inside, and here are two separate albums recorded in the King's Chamber. But the tiling in my shower does the same thing, and I doubt acoustics were considered in its design. We can reject acoustic communication during construction based on history for granite's discovery. However, we can't eliminate it entirely. Maybe the Egyptians were afraid their burial rituals needed to be heard by the gods, and these shafts could easily broadcast those spells into the heavens. We know they were concerned about gods hearing their prayers from these strange ear tablets we find that were meant to directly speak prayers into. Finally, we get to History for Granite himself, who proposes, like the ancient Arabs, that these are air vents. He proposes they were cut after completion to allow fresh and cool air for visitors. His theory being that, for at least for some time, the huge blocking plugs were not used and the porcullus was either left open or could be toggled to let people in. Remember, the only light came from fire, which both burned oxygen and made CO2. I like this theory. I also believe that the pyramid was intended to be visited by pilgrims. However, I believe the unfinished lower section was meant for that purpose, and upon a sudden death of Khufu, this was replaced with a more traditional eastern offering temple like his father Snefru. Personally, I believe the granite plugs closed the pyramid very shortly after Khufu was placed in his tomb, though he's admittedly way more knowledgeable on the subject than I am. One of these theories may be right, but it's also possible none of them are. Even if one of these theories is correct, there still appears to be some piece of information that we are missing. To be honest, the purpose of the shafts isn't even the main mystery of this video. I'm just using it as a segue because there is one feature of the shaft that I have never heard a valid explanation for. I think we might be able to answer the question of the purpose if we answer the one that I have first. Why is it here? Let me show you what's behind this wall. You are now looking through the north wall where Morton Egger was in the last slide. The shaft goes into the wall about 10 feet, then makes a wide swing to the west before straightening out and making the shortest connection to the outer edge. Why? A commonly held belief is to get around the Grand Gallery. Some people have pointed out that even without the bend, the shaft would still not have hit the Grand Gallery, which is what had people like Houdan putting hidden chambers there, but Scan Pyramid squashed that idea. I discovered that the shell of structures is way thicker than expected in this video, so in my opinion, there is likely meters of packed stone around the Grand Gallery they did not want to compromise. So in my opinion, I think it a fair assumption that the shaft had to snake around the thick outer shell of the Grand Gallery. So because of this extra thickness, bending around the Grand Gallery does work for me as a reason for the bend. Sort of. It works for me if, and only if, the location of the hole was required to be where it is. That's the mystery that I have been racking my brain with regarding these shafts. Why is the hole here? If you want to go around the Grand Gallery, then just avoid the Grand Gallery entirely. The green line shows the actual path of the shaft, but if this bend did not exist like I drew in orange, the shaft would still enter the King's Chamber, right next to the sarcophagus. I've heard no good explanation for this. These bends are one of the more complicated things to design in the pyramid, and required dozens of custom blocks. Some claim the bend is to prevent things coming down it from picking up too much speed, which is a likely feature of man-sized tunnels the Egyptians dug, but it doesn't work here because the southern shafts go pretty much straight towards the face, unless one assumes the north and southern shafts had different purposes, which I find very unlikely. 
Neither star alignment shafts, metaphorical rivers, communication, nor air vents require the hole to be in this exact location. I've spent probably the past two weeks trying to come up with any reason you could put the hole of the shaft here, instead of just making the northern shaft straight. But in the Queen's Chamber, we're actually getting mixed messages about the importance of the location. If the exact location of the hole matters, one would expect them to be aligned with each other, but they aren't. They're offset from each other by about a half a foot. So six inches doesn't seem to matter, but 10 feet west to save a ton of work isn't an option. I've read an idea that the shafts were started without realizing they needed to go around the gallery, but I find this very unlikely. The Egyptians were expert planners, and considering the grand gallery and shafts would have been being built at the same time, this doesn't seem logical. Furthermore, they repeated this behavior for the king's chamber after already doing it in the queen's chamber. If this was a mistake, surely they wouldn't repeat it. So I'm going to have to come up with something else. After all this time thinking purely about the position of these holes, I have two ideas. The first is old reliable, religion. The proportions, the measurements, something about this position was spiritually significant to Khufu, and there is no way to really know what it was. We have a vague idea of Khufu's religion, but I hate using religion like this because even if we entirely understand a religion, that doesn't mean we understand how each person interacts with that religion. All of the men in these photos are Southern Baptist Christians in the 1960s. They have the same holy book, same stories, same gods, but they could not have more opposite worldviews. Here's an exercise. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of an archaeologist 5,000 years in the future. Christianity has been gone as long as the ancient Egyptian religion now, and you are looking at the ruins of a building with this shape. Why is the building shaped this way? You might recognize the shape and make the correct assumption it's a Christian cross. That is, in fact, a cathedral, and the shape is entirely due to religious significance. But would you know that 5,000 years from now with just a few Bibles in museums? The cross is only mentioned within the context of the crucifixion itself and as a metaphorical cross to bear. The crucifixion is not special. It was a standard execution method of the Romans. The idolatry of the cross is not mentioned in the Bible and didn't even become common until the 300s. Confusingly, idolatry itself is even explicitly forbidden by one of the commandments, which you'd expect to override anything else. So why would an archaeologist who knows this think a cross is a significant shape? One might even logically assume it to be a taboo shape due to its purpose in the story. It'd be like forming a religion around Marie Antoinette and using a guillotine as its symbol. Because of all of these problems of trying to interpret their beliefs of a religion that is still being practiced today, I have no intention of theorizing about the beliefs of Khufu and his innermost circle 4,500 years ago. But I do think religion may be the most likely reason for the holes being where they are. Luckily, my other theory is both practical and testable. It is that there is something in the way of just going straight into the chamber. In my very first video, I talked about how John Pering only didn't close off a hallway in his drawing if he could not determine where it ended, and that I believed that this drawing indicated he believed there was a blocked tunnel going south from the well shaft. This is also the same course of masonry as the scanned pyramids passage and the queen's chamber floor. I proposed there are blocked tunnels going both directions, one to let someone inspect the test chevrons in the Scan Pyramids passage, and one to inspect the chevrons of the Queen's Chamber. I think there is a small, rough tunnel cut right through here, which would end directly where the shaft would end if it was going straight, meaning it would have to bend and snake between it and the Grand Gallery. Of course, this theory doesn't explain why the same bend would exist in the King's Chamber, Unless there's some reason to believe there is also a tunnel hidden behind the king's chamber wall right next to the sarcophagus, we'd need evidence for such a thing. Oh, 
Well, isn't that interesting? The Great Void, which is a big unexplored space high up, is in this direction too. I'd really love to put a potentiometer against that block and tap it with a hammer. I'm unsure if this is something a tourist would be allowed to do. I doubt you could hear a difference by ear, but a hollow versus solid echo would be extremely obvious on any decent sensor. I think it's entirely possible that the way into the Great Void is this stone in the King's Chamber. It's directly in the way of the path of the shaft takes for most of its journey, and it's the only possible removable block inside. I've thoroughly searched the west face of the Great Pyramid looking for a plugged entrance like Paring found for the upper section of the Bent Pyramid. I figured until recently there was no reason to look for one, so it may have been overlooked. I found these three random two-course-high stones, but they don't seem to be a passageway. So that's why I'm going to tentatively say the holes are where they are. Both the shafts slip between a hidden passage and the Grand Gallery. I propose the one behind the Queen's Chamber wall is backfilled, so to look for it, we'd need more footage of the well shaft where Paring indicated a blocked tunnel was. As for the King's Chamber, I think a potentiometer and a hard striker is all one would need to prove whether or not there is a hollow behind the stone next to the coffer. Thank you for listening. Respectfully discuss the location of the shaft holes in the comments and subscribe to continue to explore the mysteries of our distant ancestors with me.